Harry wasn't there long, but he was there. What do you make of his visit? Well, I thought the fact he got on the first plane that he could is indicative of how serious the situation may well be with King Charles. We don't know what cancer it is, but clearly any cancer when you're 75 years old is going to be serious. And I think the fact that Harry flew from California almost immediately reflects that. But it's a bit strange, isn't it, that he would fly 6,000 miles, taking a whole day to get here, and he ends up with reportedly 30 minutes, according to The Sun, uh, with his father at Clarence House in London before his father gets on a helicopter and goes to the estate at Sandringham. Um, you know, I think in a normal family, if you flew across the world to see a member of your family, a very close member, your father, whoever it may be, you would expect perhaps to get a little bit more face time in 30 mm. minutes. So I think that's indicative of still the slight iciness between Harry and almost all the royals, including his father, and particularly his brother William, who he didn't see at all. And it was briefed very quickly by sources close to William. He had no intention of seeing him. So you have a, a, an implacable feud between those two. But you also have, I think, an ice in the still from Charles to his son, as any father would have, to a son who's been throwing the kind of grenades that Harry has for the last few years. Yeah, and uh, the, the palace, the details that have come from the palace peers have been very thin at the moment. Your contact book runs deep. Do you know how the king is doing? Well, I just all I know is they're taking it very seriously. I spoke to somebody very close to the royals yesterday who said this came as a real shock. He went in for the benign prostate procedure. That all passed off very easily and satisfactorily. He was out of hospital very quickly, and that seemed to be the end of it. But in that process, they took a lot of tissue away just to be uh, double sure and to check there was nothing else going on. And as can often happen, apparently, when men of that kind of age go in for that prostate mm. procedure, they did find a secondary condition unrelated to the prostate. The, the rumour, Mill, for what it's worth, is it may have been something like bladder cancer, which can often be a secondary thing related to prostate issues. That's not been confirmed. Uh, if it is bladder cancer, then medical experts have told me that would actually be quite good news because if they have caught that early, the prognosis is usually pretty mm. good. So, look, we're dealing in the world of speculation. We've been told not to speculate, but how can you not speculate when it's the king of the United Kingdom who has got cancer? So I will be surprised if they don't reveal sooner rather than later exactly what type of cancer it is. But for now, I'm just told, look, it's serious and they're taking it very seriously. He's cancelling all public engagements and we've got to wait and see and mm. hope for the best. We do indeed. Elsewhere, Piers, um, I enjoyed your interview with Rishi Sunak a couple of nights ago. How do you rate his chances at the next election? Well, the bookies rate them as pretty low. Uh, you know, Keir Starmer's Labour Party way ahead in the polls. But there is precedent for this. You know, in 1992, Neil Kinnock was the Labour leader. He was just as far ahead in the polls and ended up losing. So anything can happen in election year. We've still got potentially to wait until October, November, is when it's most likely mm. to be called. And if the economy was to continue, maybe Sunak might have half a chance. A complete change of topic, but now that I know that you're a betting man, Piers, uh, would you be betting that Arsenal winning the Premier League or Donald Trump returning to the White House is more likely? I would think they're both a, a pretty good bet right now. <laughs> Arsenal looking very strong, Donald Trump looking very strong. And if Trump, as, as all the polls now suggest, wins a Republican nomination, despite having 91 criminal charges, then you've got to say there's almost nothing that can stop him getting back to the White House. It certainly doesn't look like it'll be Joe Biden, who can barely string a sentence together or stay on two feet. So I think if it's a match-up between Trump, who, you know, all right, he's 77, 78, whatever he is, but he's never had a drink, never had a cigarette, never smoked, uh, never taken a drug or anything like that, he actually is remarkably healthy for a guy of his age, whereas Biden looks remarkably senile, frankly, I don't want to be disrespectful, but he does. I think if it's those two uh, come November in America, I think Trump wins.